Water system had to be improved. That was one of several issues that had to be hammered out. The Great Lakes Water Authority, or GLWA, will lease city-owned mains, pipes, and filtration plants for $50 million a year and would use most, if not all, of that money to improve Detroit's crumbling infrastructure that led to thousands of water main breaks and sinkholes. We're going to be able to sell bonds between five and $800 million. We are going to go through the city and rebuild our water main system the way it should have been rebuilt years ago. Here's what the authority would look like. Mayor Mike Duggan would appoint two members to the new water board. Governor Rick Snyder, Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb counties would each appoint one member. All major decisions would have to be approved by a super majority. Five out of six votes. A huge departure from prior practice. Oakland County Exec L. Brooks Patterson fought hard for it. My residents have always had a real problem with us being in a minority position. Detroit has four votes. Wayne Oakland Macomb has three. We'll do the math. Well, we, we never seriously had a chance to affect the operation of the Detroit Water and Sewer Board over those last 40, 50 years, and that's where the animosities grew. So now we share control. We have a seat at the table that we've long sought. Rate hikes would be capped at 4% a year for a decade. The authority would also spend $4.5 million a year to help customers behind on their bills. Now that's not just for Detroiters. If you live in Warren, if you live in Pontiac, uh, and you're below the poverty level and you're in need, we, there will be a water affordability fund for this region. Duggan says the agreement would not exactly speed up the bankruptcy proceedings, but it would keep it from slowing down. Patterson said he and Macomb County executives Mark Hackle had to get on board because the creation of the regional authority was going to happen whether they liked it or not. Hackle says it may be for the best. If we want to be competitive with other regions throughout this country, we need to start coming together and acting as a region. We may not all get what we want out of these bargains and out of these deals, but we need to put down the swords and come to the reality that we got to look at and focus on a region. That was Randy Mildy reporting. Today, Detroit South. The generation's long fight over the Detroit Water and Sewer Department has ended with a historic agreement. Tonight, a landmark deal for a newly created Great Lakes Regional Water Authority is in place. For a look at the deal and what it means after this uh, long, long road to get here, let's bring in our business editor, Rob Maloney, live at the federal courthouse, and that's where this deal was negotiated, Ron. Yes, Devin, you know, the first thing that everybody wants to know about is what does this mean to my bill? Well, it's going to cap the increase at 4% per year, at least for the next 10 years. That's good news. And Elbrooks Patterson was careful to point out, he's the Oakland County Executive, that if your bill goes higher than that, you need to take it up with your local city. Because oftentimes, local cities tack on surcharges and raise your bill still higher than what it is from the local water department. But in the meantime, what really needs to be understood here is the complete sea change, the, the almost uh, shift in the fabric of the universe of this region that this deal creates. I think it's a good deal for the city. I think it's a good deal for the suburbs. We Mayor Mike Duggan, certain that this is the right answer, and here's what it looks like. Detroit will manage all DWSD systems inside the city. Detroit keeps all DWSD assets under its ownership. The regional authority pays the city $50 million a year to lease the DWSD facilities outside Detroit. The Water Authority will borrow between $500 and $800 million using the state's bonding authority, or credit rating, so that the city can begin completely rebuilding building its dilapidated pipe system that Mike Duggan said should have been done years ago. It will mean thousands of jobs. The contracts will be let by the Detroit Water Department. We're going to put Detroiters to work rebuilding the system. The suburbs get the following. The $50 million it pays will stay inside the system, cannot be used by the city of Detroit for general expenses as it has done before. The city's unpaid bills will not be paid in the future by the suburbs. Yet at the same time, the regional authority is going to set up a $4.5 million revolving fund to help the poor with their water bills. Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle said this is an important deal if for no other reason than future business opportunity. If we can't be competitive amongst ourselves, if we want to be competitive with other regions throughout this country, we need to start coming together and acting as a region. We may not all get what we want out of these bargains and out of these deals, but we need to put down the swords and come to the reality that we got to look at and focus on a region. 
Now here is how the voting goes on this new Water Authority Board. Mayor Detroit gets two picks. Then Oakland County, Macomb County, Wayne County each get one vote. The governor gets one. In order to get anything passed, you need five votes. So there's going to be a lot of work to do to try and make sure that you get what you want. But you can also stop things if you don't like the way things are going by simply getting one other vote. In the meantime, this has a huge impact on the bankruptcy trial, which is now in day six. We were in there this morning. And coming up on Local 4 News at 6, we'll tell you what that really means. Live downtown, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All right, thank you, Rod. Rod. Well, protesters against oil and gas drilling went to Lansing today. They want state senators to make it illegal for oil rigs to set up less than 500 feet from their home without public input. Armed with signs and chants, they made sure that lawmakers heard them loud and clear. Our Priya Mann was there. A number of grassroots organizations each had its own agenda, but the end game is clear. Give communities the power to refuse oil and gas drilling and have these rigs set up further away. No After summer recess, state legislators are getting back to business, and these protesters are making sure they're a priority. Anybody can be targeted, and believe me, what they're doing right now is legal, but I don't believe it's moral, and it's certainly not ethical, and I challenge our legislators to correct that. Some here say a six-month moratorium on drilling in communities like Shelby Township and Rochester Hills is a way to buy time before the November election, but a new bill recently introduced would make it illegal to drill in a township with more than 70,000 people. Cities have home rule, townships were vulnerable. Townships govern 96% of the land to area in Mich Michigan, and right now it's legal for gas and oil companies to drill. Some say Bill 1026 isn't the game changer it's been made out to be. The bill allows a supervisor to approve a drill site even if the public didn't want it, just as long as they felt the rig didn't create waste or they couldn't find another location. People are not having any ability here to say what they want in their neighborhoods. This is a bipartisan issue. It's an important time to really be looking at this. Protesters also want rigs to be set back from 450 feet to at least 1,500 feet from their homes. Some protesters respect the right to develop oil and gas. They just don't want to see it from their bedroom window. They're proposing directional drilling where these oil rigs could set up two miles from residential communities. Reporting from Lansing, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4.